Hello, welcome to Contagion, Dr. Brofsky, Dr. Sun Shion. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Or us. So both, yes, exactly. So both of our guests today have a background in cancer that has now come to overlap with SARS-CoV-2 research and response in surprising ways. We have Dr. Adam Brofsky, an accomplished oncologist who has recently worked with virologists and infectious disease specialists to publish on coronavirus. And we have Dr. Patrick Sunshion of Immunity Bio, whose extensive history in the cancer space includes pioneering the development of Abraxane. And Dr. Sun Xiang was part of a group which helped coordinate the initial COVID response in California. And on top of that, Immunity Bio is also a part of Operation Warp Speed, the SARS-CoV-2 Vaccine Development Accelerated Program. So we can dive into the virology, the interesting comparisons with cancer, variety of topics. But to start, I want to go to the pressing news of the recent few days, which is the vaccine developments. Dr. Sun Xiang, last time we spoke, you expressed concern that the eradication of T cells by the virus can create a kind of immune amnesia, sort of like with measles, leading to reinfection. But you also expressed hope that with immunity bios, integration of nucleocapsid DNA into the adenovirus vector vaccine, that that might actually help provide longer lasting protection. Can you give us your thoughts on the recent vaccine developments and perhaps some also of what a vaccine rollout will look like in practice? Well, Adam, I think if you, as you saw, all these vaccines that's being rolled out are variations of delivering spike as a as the antigen. So, and, I, and it makes sense if you're really just looking at antibodies or neutralizing antibodies. But I'm afraid this vaccine is smarter than that. I think what we're going to need, frankly, is three sets of antibodies, not just antibodies, but th the entire armamentarium of the immune system which means you're gonna need what we call cell-mediated immunity. You're gonna need humoral immunity, B-cell immunity, and you're also gonna need mucosal immunity, which means IgA, uh, CD4, CD8 T cells, and you need the neutralizing antibodies. So my concern is, and, and, and it was a predictive concern because we didn't know, and uh, we're really learning as we speak. So. I take everything as a scientist, as an evolution of thought, not from, um, but we learned initially from just SARS-CoV, and we're learning now how SARS-CoV-2 is just, is, is just is a little different, not that much different, but much more vicious. So the spike protein with the RBD is important, but I think my concern is that the immunity, even from an infected person, appears to wane uh, on the antibody side. And I think it emphasizes even more so that, that the protectivity will come from the T cells. And I think you now see some papers where patients who are agammaglobulinemic, meaning have no inherited B cell, no ability to have uh, antibodies, yet were able to recover from a COVID infection, which then speaks to the strength and need for the T cells. So we can talk a little bit about, you know, the Chad Ox trial, which just came out yesterday. We talk about the, the Chinese Cancino, which just came out, the BioNTech, the protein came out, and the Moderna that came out. So luckily, uh, this data, even though it's early phase one, phase two, has come out. Um, but I, th I see within that we should start digging deep into this data. Uh, one of my greatest fears are now unfortunately being borne out. The first fear is if you use just a, and it's unproven at this point, write the RNA or protein-based subunit. You call this, I call this subunit because it's just all S. And if you look at the Moderna results, you see, um, you see uh, antibodies, but if you go into the supplement, which is deep in the supplement, there's the, the CD8 T cells, is quite literally zero, zero T cells. So it is not- I'm keeping quiet, I'm not saying anything, I'm letting you speak here, Pat. You're saying everything I was about, you know, you're stealing a lot of it, but keep going, this is great. Roll, run with it. <laughs> no, you, 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 you jump in yet. No, 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 keep running, I'm not, I'm not, I don't need to say anything yet, just keep running with it. Okay, well, you just support it and if you, if you agree with it. But I, I, this is not a bashing, <coughs> by the way. This is not a bashing of, just so you know, no. very, very important. No this is not a bashing of any 
company or product. I'm just trying to talk to the science. So one of the concerns I've always had about just an RNA vaccine is that really the generation of that RNA is going to happen uh, just for a short period of time. And maybe that's why we're not generating um, the, the T cells from that Moderna result. 